Hi, welcome to the Alkene Edition Playlist in Organic Chemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. It's very much appreciated. Thanks. Um, in this video, um, we're going to go over a very important concept for talking about different Alkene Edition reactions. Okay. And that's the concept of whether or not a reaction is a Markovnikov addition or an anti-Markovnikov addition. Okay? Before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about alkene carbon substitutions. Okay? So the alkene is essentially this right here. That's the double bond. Okay? We're assuming that we're just talking about one of the carbons, the one that's indicated in each of these cases. And we want to talk about is it, does it have two substitutions, one or none at all? And the general rule is that for this carbon, if it has two R groups, and those basically, for all intents and purposes, have to be carbon chains, so it could be a methyl, an ethyl, an isopropyl, whatever, if there's two carbon chains, then we say it is di-substituted. It's di-substituted, right? Okay. Let me make sure that's legible. Di-substituted. Okay, there we go. If one of these groups is a hydrogen, but the other one is an R group, doesn't matter what side it's on, doesn't matter if it's cis or trans, EZ, then we say it is mono substituted, right? Now, here's a, a trick question. What if it has two hydrogens on it, meaning that there's no R groups on this particular carbon of the double bond? Well, you say, well, di is two, mono is one. What kind of substitution is this? Well, it has another name. We just call it a terminal, a terminal alkene. Okay, and why is it terminal? Well, look for, look for example at a compound like this. What if we have something like this? Okay, a compound like that where the double bond is right here. And again, notice it has two hydrogens right there on it, right? So we would say that carbon right there has zero. Okay zero substitutions, but notice that in terms of what we call ends of the molecule, here's one end of the molecule, there's another end, it doesn't have to have two, it can actually have more than that, here's an end of the molecule, and since that alkene is on one of the ends of the molecule, it's termed a terminal alkene. What if you instead had the alkene in a different position? Maybe it was right there instead, right? Well, notice this alkene, if you, the, the term, the, at least the, um, the ends of the molecule are still the same positions, essentially. But notice the alkene is actually in the middle right here of the molecule. It's not on one of the ends. So this is what we call an internal alkene. Okay? It's internal because it's not at one of the ends. It's somewhere um, in the middle. And when you have an internal alkene, it's always going to have one substitution carbon-wise on either side. So notice this one has a carbon substitution right here. That carbon on the left is monosubstituted. The one on the right also has one carbon chain. It's also monosubstituted. So if you actually have a, an internal alkene, both of the carbons in the double bond have to be either mono or disubstituted. Okay? But here's the whole point. Um, we need to be able to understand which carbon is more substituted and which one is less substituted in order to understand Markovnikov's rule. So what is Markovnikov's rule? Well, this right here, this is Vladimir Markovnikov. He's a Russian chemist, and he did a lot of work with addition reactions of alkenes. And here's what he noticed. He noticed that when you take this general alkene right here, you take the general alkene and you subject it to some set of reagents. Ordinarily, what we're going to use is something that has hydrogen, and then it has some other group right there. I'm just indicating it very generically with a blue ball and a purple ball, okay? Some other group. What Markovnikov noted was that in most of the cases, most of them, the hydrogen of this reagent right here, the hydrogen of that reagent added to the side of the double bond that had the most hydrogens. Okay, let's look at this alkene. What has the most hydrogens there? If I look at the left side, does that carbon have any hydrogens? Well, it has zero. It has two carbon chains, but it has no hydrogens, right? This has zero hydrogens, okay? Let me make that a little clearer. This has zero hydrogens, okay? What about the 
this side over here, the right side. How many hydrogens does that have? Well, it has two hydrogens. So the right side has more hydrogens, and what Markovnikov noted was, in general, most of these addition reactions, and there's some you're not going to learn, but there's more than just what's in your book, most of them have the hydrogen of this reagent adding to the side with the most hydrogens. And that's what you see here. Notice the, the red hydrogen added to the side with the most hydrogens, right? Okay. Well, what does that imply? Well, that also implies that this other thing over here, this blue group, whatever it is, then that should add to the side that has the least hydrogens, right? If it doesn't have the most hydrogens, then that side has to have the least. So, in other words, when you're looking at Markovnikov's rule, and it's very much a generalization because there are exceptions, we'll talk about those, but in general what his rule says, there's two ways to put it. The reagent's hydrogen adds to the side that has the most hydrogens. Or you can say this group, whatever it is, and it varies, this blue group, adds to the side that's more substituted, right? Because this blue group added to, it added to the left side, right? And that's more substituted. How many carbons did this have? Well, it had zero hydrogens, but it had two carbon groups. How many carbon groups did the right side have? It had zero carbons. So what we would say is the left side is more substituted. So that's why the blue group added over here, okay? And the hydrogen did, did not. It added to the side with the most hydrogens or the least substituted. If something obeys this form of the addition reaction, we say that it is a Markovnikov addition. It's a Markovnikov addition. Okay, I will abbreviate this as just simply M in this video. So capital M, that's a Markovnikov addition. Okay, so that's what you see here. The group, this blue group, adds to the more substituted side. And, there, and most of the reactions we're going to see are going to follow that rule. But Markovnikov noted that there were exceptions to this. Case in point, look at the bottom here, going down. I have another reagent here, the hydrogen still here. Here's the hydrogen. Oops, let me get green for that. Here's the hydrogen. And then I have this purple group over here. But notice for this particular reaction, the hydrogen actually added to the more substituted side, right? This side on the left was more substituted. Notice the hydrogen actually added there, right? And then notice that the purple group, the purple group instead added to the least substituted side. And clearly that's a violation of what is Markovnikov's rule, because Markovnikov's rule says normally the hydrogen adds to the side with the most hydrogens, and the purple group, or whatever the group is, should add to the side that's more substituted, with carbons, that is. But this violated that, so this is what we actually call, this is what we call an anti, an anti Markovnikov addition. It's anti-Markovnikov because it's, it does the exact opposite of what Markovnikov predicted for most reactions. Okay, And there's a, a couple of important ones that we're going to look at in future videos. We're at least going to get a general idea here. But whenever we start talking about addition reactions, you have to understand Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov additions. Markovnikov, the group, adds to the most substituted side. In anti-Markovnikov, it adds to the least substituted side. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's look at some examples, and we're just going to look at the general reaction for it, and you're going to decide whether or not it's Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov. Also, I'm going to denote anti-Markovnikov as AM. Okay? So this right here, we have an alkene. We subject it to HCl. Notice in all of these cases, I have the compound the same. The Let's do the left side. This is the more substituted side. This is more substituted. The right side is less substituted. Okay, So the question is, where is it adding? Well, if I just take this alkene and subject it to HCl, and by the way, this type of reaction is called hydrohalogenation, then notice the chlorine adds to the most substituted side. So that would make this, notice this is the group, that's like that blue group we looked at. The chlorine adds to the most substituted, therefore this is a Markovnikov addition. Okay? Now, you have a, there's actually another type of hydrohalogenation, except we're going to use hydroiodic acid instead of hydrochloric acid. 
And again, notice for HI, this group, this blue group, this I, adds to the more substituted side of the double bond, right? More substituted. Therefore, this is also a Markovnikov addition, okay? Now, here's a different reaction. We still use HBr, but we're throwing in a peroxide. This is an organic peroxide and some heat, okay? And notice that instead, the bromine right there, which is now going to be sort of reminiscent of the purple group from up there, right? The bromine actually adds to the least substituted side, okay? So here's the bromine right there. So that makes this anti-Markovnikov addition, okay? And one more example of a hydrohalogenation, but this one with HBr is without the peroxide. And this one, I'll go ahead and tell you this group right there, the bromide, adds to the more substituted position. So that makes this hydrohalogenation Markovnikov. Okay? Let's look at another example. This one's called, when you see H3O plus in an alkene, this is hydration of an alkene. We'll look at that in another video. So with hydronium, notice it looks like this. Here's hydronium, that's our H3O+, plus. that's our active species. Notice that the OH, which is this part right there, the OH adds to the most substituted position, right? Okay, the OH adds there, so what does that make this? That makes it Markovnikov, so hydration of an alkene is a Markovnikov addition, okay? Let's look at this one. When you see BH3 and THF in the first step, that's a dead giveaway that this reaction is, is what's referred to as hydroboration oxidation. And what you should notice is that the OH group right here, which ultimately comes from this hydroxide right there, notice it adds to the least substituted position. We're, in other words, we're hydroxylating the least substituted side. That automatically makes this anti-Markovnikov. Okay? And then here's a, the last reaction we'll look at. This one, when you see this mercury right there and this acetate here, mercuric acetate, that's a dead giveaway that you're doing oxymercuration, demercuration. That's the topic of another video. Again, again, notice we have this water right there, which is also an active species. What we're essentially going to say is this OH right there, that's the OH we added there, okay? And notice that it added to the most substituted position, right? So that makes this reaction Markovnikov, okay? Now, once you get beyond um, this reaction, oxymercuration, demercuration, you may do either one of these, this one or this one. You may do either one of those um, first. But after you get through the second one, you're going to do something called catalytic hydrogenation usually. And once you get to that and beyond, the reactions are neither... Um, Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov. So these right here in general, for the ones that are normally taught, these are the only reactions that are going to be classified as Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov. The other ones are going to use a different classification called sin and anti. Um, that's not what we're going to do here for the most part. These are going to be Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov. And notice, most of them do follow Markovnikov's rule. The one that doesn't is what's called radical um, bromination or it's also called anti-Markovnikov hydrohalogenation, and then hydroboration oxidation. So in general, you're going to have two reactions that don't follow Markovnikov's rule, but notice that the majority of them do. And there are other reactions in organic chemistry that you're not going to learn that are alkene additions like this. And again, most of them satisfy Markovnikov's rule. Okay? So hopefully this video gave you a little bit of intuition on Markovnikov's rule. Um, we're going to, in the next few videos, we're going to go into some of the um, actual reactions and hopefully get a good handle on what they do. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel um, for future videos and notifications. Thank you. I'm Kevin Tokoff. Um, come back and see the playlist.